Hey guys, um, so I've had a request on how to uh, make my um, filigree wood grain pens. Um, I just finished these ones today. So I am going to try to film a tutorial for you. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna take me a couple days to do it. So you'll have bits and pieces here and there all put together. So if you have any questions, make sure you let me know and I will get these, I'll get these. I will show you how to make these, okay? Okay. Thanks. So first off, all these pens are pretty much ready to be um, filigreed, I guess you'd say. I do need to sand some of them, um, but they are, I just did um, spray paint, then I put glitter on them, and some of them have a couple layers of glitter because the glitter's a little darker, and it didn't take as well the first time, but this is a brown glitter. So what I'm gonna do is I am about to show you what file I use on uh, my Cricut to cut them out. So we will get to that. Okay, so first off, this is actually the file that I purchased on Etsy for my filigree designs. Um, you can use these on a tumbler, but these are these are actually the perfect size for a pen. Um, so it is by Simon Design Prints 24 on Etsy. And like it, you can see, it's only $1.90. So they're not that expensive. Um, now I'm gonna go over to my Etsy, or to my Cricut, sorry. Oh, stop. Of course they're gonna have, have issues. Hold on, let me get signed. Okay, I am now logged into my Cricut. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my new project. And I've got my, just my regular screen. And I'm on my iPad. I know it doesn't look the same as it does on computers, but I prefer to use my iPad as much as I can. So now I'm gonna go to upload. And I've already uploaded this file to my computer. So I'm gonna open my uploaded images. And it is actually right here. I'm going to, to, excuse me, insert it. I think I pushed the button and it's thinking. Did I? Yeah, it's thinking. So we'll give that a second. Our internet's slow, so that could be what's causing it to go slow. Come on. Do I need to do it again? Try insert now. Oh, there we go. Okay. So as you can see, it is actually fairly big and it's all one file. So because it's all one file, I don't wanna use all of them. That just, it just drives me nuts to use all of them. Um, so I'm gonna just pick one. So the first thing I have to do is go down here and go to um, actions and I am going to ungroup them. So now they are six separate files you can see. So I'm gonna pick which one I want to use. Um, Let's see, I've been using, I've used on, um, I've used like half of them. So let's try, let's try this one this time. So I'm actually going to, well, actually, no, I really like, I really liked this one. So I'm going to delete the rest of these, okay? So I'm just going to select them and then click on the red X to delete them because I don't need all of them. Oops, come on. Okay, so now I have my one right here and I need to make sure it is the right size for my pens before I duplicate it to make more for my pens. So I'm gonna go down to edit and I'm gonna make my width 1.5. Okay, and I really don't care about the height because usually what I end up doing is I use the top two filigree and I cut the bottom one off and you can save it for later. You don't have to use it right now, um, but it works really well. It's the perfect height, which is the top two. So now I'm going to, it's 1.5, so I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna hit duplicate. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing these on a 12 by 12 piece of um, removable vinyl, or repositionable, I guess some people call it, but it's removable. So I'm gonna look really quickly, I'm gonna go to make it and just see how that's gonna fit. Okay, so canvas again. I'm gonna do, because you see I have a lot of pens to make, obviously. Um, five. Six, make it. Okay, I think I'm gonna do a seventh one right next to it. Duplicate a seventh before it makes a, needs a new page. Okay, still one page. Okay, so I'm gonna really quickly attach these together just so they stay where they are. So I'm actually going to attach them and then weld them. I don't want to lose them. I want them to stay that way. Oh shoot, hold on. Let me undo my weld really fast and undo my attachment. Because I forgot I need to make one more copy. I'm gonna duplicate that one again and just move that one over here. Now I'm going to reattach and re-weld them. Okay, 
Now this one, I'm actually gonna turn sideways because I can fit one or two more underneath. Let me do it a little bit further away. So I'm gonna look at make it and see. See now it's trying to do it. But look, at I have a lot of space here. So I can actually, I think, do two more. So I'm gonna duplicate that the way it is and just do one more underneath. Now I'm gonna select it all and I'm going to attach it and weld it together. Now if I go to my make it side, you can see it's all on one page and I've actually maximized the use of that piece of 12 by 12 car, um, vinyl. And so I've got, what is that? Seven, eight, nine on here. And I have, let's see how many pens. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 pens. So I can do get nine of them cut out at once. And actually I may be able to do the other ones by using these pieces. Since they're all the same direction, I can cut those off and use them as well. So we'll see how that goes. So now I'm gonna go cut it on my Cricut. So I usually do it on um, just vinyl, not vinyl plus, just vinyl standard cut. And that's gonna take a little while. So I will show you in a second what I'm gonna do while that is cutting. So I'm gonna get that started and I'll be back. All right, now my vinyl is cutting. So while my vinyl is cutting, I'm gonna go through these and make sure that they are sanded flat. I mean, I don't know if you can see, but this actually has a few bumps on it. And when you're doing these types of pens, you wanna make sure that your surface is as flat as possible. So when you attach those, um, that, those pieces of removable vinyl that are gonna be your stencils will stick and that you don't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That you don't accidentally peel them up, especially when you're doing the alcohol inks because that can uh, ruin it and you don't wanna ruin them, okay? So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm not gonna film it. You guys know what sanding looks like. So I'm just going to come back to you after I'm done sanding and show you what I do okay. next. So if I didn't say it before, please disregard my messy workstation. I'm a messy worker. So these are all sanded. Um, as you can see, some of them do look rough. Now don't let that stop you from doing what you're doing. Um, after you peel off the stencils that you've basically made later, um, when you put epoxy on the top, it'll shine right back up. So don't even worry about that. Um, I did my stencils on this piece of paper. I'm about to cut it up and weed it and I'll show you what look like. they look like when I'm done. But this is an Oracle 631 and I do get all of my vinyl from Expressions Vinyl. Uh, not sponsored, but they're my favorite. And I really don't care on these which color I use because it's a removable and they're not expensive. So um, I will show you these after I cut them out and weed them. Okay, okay. I'll see you soon. Um, I know I didn't film myself weeding this, but this just took literally like 15 seconds I picked up one corner and just pulled across and it looks like I may have lost one piece of a flower in there but I'm not concerned about those pieces like that piece it may be just one because these don't have to be perfect when you do this okay so I will show you what I'm doing next just a second all right as you can see I've got it all cut down now and I'm going to use this transfer tape um this is also expressions vinyl um I have expressions vinyl here too and I like to set my pen up when I'm doing my stenciling on my Expressions Vinyl thing because it has the ridge in the middle and it makes it nice and easy to layer it or to lay it um, to make sure I get these in the right the right position. And I've cut these down. Um, they do have, I'll show you on this one because I haven't cut this one down yet. Um, on the bottom they have the two leaves and, <clears throat> sorry, I ended up cutting them off of these ones because it was just a little bit too long even with um, the trimming I did. So. Um, I'm going to put one on here and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, you can see that I put the decal all around my pen. Now I do something else that I don't know if you'll see anyone do, but I like to put my hand around it and kind of use the heat from my hand to push the decals down very, um, very strongly so that they don't come off when we are doing our spray painting or our alcohol ink. Um, because that can happen because you're gonna be giving it some friction with the alcohol ink. So that is what that looks like. Now I'm gonna continue doing the rest of these and then next thing I'll show you to do is the spray painting. Okay, I'll be back. All right, y'all, as you can see, I have my filigree on all these with my removable vinyl and I'm trying to make sure they were on super stuck uh, for now so that I don't get any paint underneath them. And actually what I paint them with is this flat white primer, just the Rust-Oleum. Um, it is, I know that a lot of people will just use white, but the primer wasn't, you know, it was the same price as the white. And so I like to do it on all of these before I do the alcohol ink. So I'm gonna do that um, and I just do even strokes. It's hard to film right now because I only have one hand available with the two um, and I don't have my <laughs> tripod 
right now. So I'm not gonna show you me painting, but I'll show you them after they're all painted, okay? So just right. a moment. As you can see, I just did a very thin, even coat of the um, white primer over these. It's hard to tell. Um, some you can see, you can kind of see the glitter color underneath, which is okay because when we put our alcohol ink on, that's gonna hide that completely. You're not gonna even know that that slight bit of color is even showing up anymore. All right, so next thing I'll show you is after these dry, um, which I usually do about 24 hours on the drying on the spray paint, I will alcohol ink these. So I will show you some more tomorrow after these are dry. If I can get this to turn off. All right, everyone. Um, so these have dried overnight. Um, they are ready to be wood grain and if you look really close, you can kind of see the design through them. Um, you don't have to see it completely, but I am going to be using two different alcohol inks. I'm gonna go through all of them first and be using Butterscotch by Tim Holt or Tim Holtz. Is it Tim Holtz? Yeah, Tim Holtz. Um, this is my first color I do. And then I will follow it up with Teakwood. Now I love doing the alcohol inks because they don't have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna um, show you how I do this. I'll probably do th go through all of them and I will speed it up so you don't have to watch them all in regular time. Um, but I'll show you the first one in slow time. So I just run a line down. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. If it goes everywhere, that's fine. Cause you're just gonna go like this up and down. And I'm just using a sponge brush and I don't care about perfection, especially in the first layer. See, I like to do it with this light one and then sometimes I'll do two layers of the light over it. So I'll do one more layer of light up and down. Just kind of make sure I've got a good base coat of that yellow. And the butterscotch is more of a, it's like a mustard yellow. You can use mustard, but I prefer butterscotch. And then see, it's not perfect and that's okay. Wood grain does not have to be perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna do um, some quicker ones of the others. And then I'll come back to show you the second layer with the teak wood. over them um, with a second layer with my teak wood alcohol ink by Tim Holtz and I'm using the exact same sponge I don't care <clears throat> the colors are gonna mix anyway so it doesn't matter so let me just show you what I do with my second layer and then I will go through and do all of them and show you when they're all done okay so here's the first one okay so I'm gonna do the exact same that I did with the um, butterscotch I'm just gonna let it drop a line down and if things move and roll it's okay and it looks really dark, but that's why we put the butterscotch underneath. The colors kind of mix together and it makes this beautiful um, brown. I really love it. And I love using the cheap sponge brush um, because sometimes at the end you get little things that look like when you cut wood. I don't know if you guys can see, it doesn't really want to focus in, but it looks like, like when you cut into wood and you get the little holes at the end sometimes. Um, so, and I'm going to do two layers of the teak wood as well. And then I might go after on some of them and put a layer of butterscotch over the teak to lighten up some spots. But really, this is all it is. And I just go up and down quickly. They don't have to be perfect. And I like when they have a, the color looks different. So I'll have some light spots and some dark spots. And you can also see how the ink is kind of pooling a little bit around my um, stencils. That is fine. It'll look really cool when we take everything off at the end. See that part is really wet there. But that is what the first one looks like. So now I'm gonna do the rest and then I'll show them to you all. Okay. Okay, y'all, they are all um, wood grained now. I am actually gonna go through and peel off my decals. You don't have to wait a super long time 
Usually by the time I'm finished with my end one with the alcohol ink, the first ones can be peeled. Um, and I just have, this is actually a Harbor Freight pick that I put in a pen. Um, I realized as I made it, it's with um, shattered glass. So it's really heavy. It would be too heavy for a pen. So I just put my uh, my hook in here and I have it um, glued in with Gorilla Glue and then some hot glue on the ends just to make it so it's not uncomfortable. Um, so I'm just going to start peeling off my decals. Now you do want to be careful if you when you're grabbing the decal because it might slide. And let me grab my my scrap thing. My super high tech scrap holder. <laughs> so yeah, you want to be really careful that it doesn't slide and scratch off the wood grain or any of the paint. So I just kind of try to stick it under and then pull it off. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries to get off the whole piece. And if they're really little, they might be a pain, but got the first one off now. So let me take all the rust off for you and I'll show you what this one looks like. And then I will do all the rest in quick motion for you like I've been doing. Sometimes too, you gotta be really careful because it's hard to get under and get it to pick up. Just because I'm videoing, I'm struggling more than normal, of course. Okay, so yeah, let's take these all off. Sometimes I do use my fingers instead of the pick to help me out. Oops. And if you get a little white scratch or something, you can use some acetone or some alcohol and you can kind of um, straighten that out. Sometimes you'll get little white pieces like this through where the um, spray paint got underneath. It's okay, it still looks cool. You don't even have to fix it. It still looks cool when it's epoxied. And you'll notice, like I said, the epoxy, oh, this one I might want to fix later with some alcohol on a Q-tip and just, because the alcohol ink and the epoxy got underneath. Um, but the epoxy is not, shi or yeah, the glitter and epoxy are not shiny right now. When I epoxy on top of that, it's going to shine right up. Just got to make sure you can find all your ends to get them all out. And you can probably hear my air conditioning coming on. Sorry if that's distracting. If it's been distracting this whole time, I'm sorry. gonna look really cool this is one of the I haven't done this design yet on them since my thing comes with six different designs I've tried to do a different one each time and they all look a little bit different and they're all a little fun oops thankfully I just scratched the top of the decal and not the top of the pen where the decal is not showing up and this one is a, um, I think it's a, a dark gray glitter underneath it. So I was concerned on these ones that are gray or black underneath that they're not gonna show up as well, but I think it's gonna show up really nicely once it's epoxied on top. I've only really done bright colors underneath mine until now. So I'm kind of excited to have one that's a little different. Or have some that are a little different because I've got, I think, two black in here and two dark gray. Okay, so that one decal side is done. You probably could hear my cricket in the background too. I'm cutting some stuff. I work in my basement and I have stuff all spread out. This is the meticulous part of this, guys. So if it takes a little longer, it's okay. Just take a deep breath and get her done because it's going to be beautiful when it's done. And I find doing this it this way I rarely like super mess up. Like sometimes I'll mess up a little, like we've got some alcohol ink under here again, but I'll just take a Q-tip and fix that. But the wood grain and the filigree just, it just makes it look gorgeous. I'm actually going through, I had a whole bunch of um, solid pens that hadn't sold. So I'm taking all those solids and turning those into these wood grain filigrees. So it's kind of like, I'm not wasting it because people really love how these ones look and they sell really well. I didn't realize how well they would sell when I started making them. So now I can make lemonade out of lemons for the ones that didn't sell. So there's that too. 
almost done with this one. All right, last piece. All right, you can see how cool this is looking already without even epoxy on the top of it. These are gonna be so fun. Okay, so I'm gonna do the rest. I'm gonna do it and speed it up time for you so you don't have to watch me individually. All right, so I have weeded all of these, and you can see they all look a little different. The next thing I'm going to do is epoxy them. Um, I just use a thin layer of epoxy on them, and usually with this design, if they were smooth before you do the, um, the designs on them, uh, then you should just need one layer of epoxy to completely smooth them out, and then they'll be ready to go. So I'm going to move my camera over there and let you watch me epoxy in quick time, okay? As you can see, these are all epoxied now. Um, it's hard to tell from the video, but they are already shined up so great. Um, I do use KS Resin Liquidy Split um, in my bottles. So these will actually be dry to the touch in four hours and ready for me to ship to my customers tomorrow. So um, I think that's all you need to see for the tutorial um, because I have the four. I'll show you guys the picture of the four so you can see how they finish, and then these are ready to go. So thank you guys for joining me today. You're awesome. Bye.